Welcome to Tech Blueprint, a window that lets you know the latest technology news in the world. Recently, the news that the Trump administration announced a 25% tariff on semiconductors has spread. This is the third time that the United States has launched a systematic blockade against China's semiconductor industry after the Chips and Science Act. But what's interesting is that on the day the tariff policy was announced, Shenzhen Huaxinbang Technology announced that the yield rate of its independently developed 14 nanometers chips exceeded 92%, a figure that even exceeded the level of TSMC's Nanjing factory during the same period. This dramatic contrast just reflects the breakthrough trend of China's semiconductor industry under high pressure. The United States' combination of punches is really fierce. The CHIPS Act alone has spent $52.7 billion to subsidize local companies, and it also stipulates that companies that have received subsidies are not allowed to expand advanced production capacity in China within 10 years. What's even more amazing is that the newly appointed Secretary of Commerce Howard Lutnick directly bundled tariffs and export controls, even strangling mature process equipment. But the Americans may not have expected that their step-by-step -step pressure has activated the survival mode of China's semiconductor industry. In 2024, China's semiconductor exports exceeded the trillion mark for the first time, and the self-sufficiency rate of mature process chips soared from 15% in 2020 to 58%. There are too many counterattack stories behind this data. Take the lithography machine as an example. Now the world is staring at the EUV equipment of ASML in the Netherlands, but the team of the Chinese Academy of Sciences has taken a different approach and developed nanoimprint technology. The test line built in Hafei last year used the NIL process to achieve the equivalent of 7 nanometers performance on the 28 nanometers process. This overtaking on the curve made ASML engineers come to learn from it. Even more amazing is Huawei High Silicon's chip design team. They played architectural magic on the Kirin 9000S and optimized the 7 nanometers chip to run at the energy efficiency of 5 nanometers through heterogeneous computing, forcing Qualcomm to adjust the design plan of Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 overnight. The breakthrough in the field of materials is even more eye-catching. The two-dimensional semiconductor material developed by Shandong University has a carrier mobility 30 times higher than that of traditional silicon-based materials. If this thing is mass-produced, the 14 nanometers production line can beat others 5 nanometers. There is also the hybrid bonding technology developed by SMIC, which splices chips of different processes like Lego blocks, and has achieved the effect of advanced packaging on mature processes. These homemade steel innovations are rewriting the rules of the game in the semiconductor industry. The policy level is also fighting a coordinated war. The countermeasures introduced by China last year can be called a precise strike. The export control of key materials such as gallium and germanium directly strangles the lifeline of U.S. military semiconductors. It should be noted that 98% of the world's gallium is in China. Even more interesting is the security review of Micron. This move of using the spear of the enemy to attack the shield of the enemy has made American companies taste the taste of technological blockade for the first time. Now Yangtze Memories X stacking 3.0 architecture is sweeping the memory chip market, and Samsung's 11 and factory is secretly purchasing domestic etching machines. This kind of inverted industrial chain phenomenon was unthinkable five years ago. Of course, the difficulties are still visible to the naked eye. EUV lithography machines are still stuck, and 80% of high-end photoresists below 14 nanometers are imported. Even the seemingly simple wafer-cutting equipment, 
has a localization rate of less than 40%. But from another perspective, these shortcomings are becoming innovation outlets. Shanghai Microelectronics 28 nanometers lithography machine has entered the production line verification, and Nanjing University of Science and Technology's photoresist has won 50% of SMIC's procurement share. Even the most inconspicuous packaging molds, Guangdong companies have used 3D printing technology to achieve a precision of 0.1 microns, which is two orders of magnitude higher than the old Japanese manufacturers. The most interesting thing is the change in the market structure. The United States originally wanted to use subsidies to trick TSMC and Samsung into building factories, but the Arizona factory has a yield rate of less than 70% because the workers don't know how to wear dust-free clothes. On the other hand, SMIC's new Beijing plant has fully automated production lines that produce 28 nanometers chips like dumplings, with a monthly production capacity of 100,000 chips. What's even more embarrassing is that because China restricts the export of raw materials, the gallium nitride chips used by US military factories to make missiles were almost cut off, and they had to secretly import them through third countries. This wave of operations simply turned the sanction stick into a boomerang. The future competition may be more magical than imagined. Now there is a strange phenomenon in the global semiconductor industry. The United States is crazy about involution in the 7 nanometers track, while China is playing tricks with mature processes. Just like Oppo's Mariana chip, the NPU module specially optimized for image processing, combined with the 14 nanometers process, still beats the 5 nanometers general chip. This kind of Qianji horse racing innovation is reshaping the technology roadmap. Not to mention new tracks such as quantum chips and photonic chips, the number of patents deployed by China has already rushed to the second place in the world, and there is no guarantee that a dimensionality reduction attack will come one day. In the final analysis, the semiconductor marathon is about endurance rather than explosive power. The United States can indeed buy short-term advantages by spending money, but China's collaborative innovation across the entire industry chain is releasing amazing energy. From single crystal silicon preparation to EDA software, from ion implanters to third-generation semiconductor materials, every link is experiencing and Army's style breakthroughs. Just like the story of the counterattack of power batteries back then, the semiconductor industry may be brewing a bigger surprise. After all, in this field, the drama of latecomers turning the table has been staged more than once in history.